faces that you'll be very familiar with, Steve and Chris, who are going to tell you some very exciting news. Okay. Thanks, Graham. Hi, my name's Steve Heap. I'm the uh, General Secretary of the Association of Festival Organisers and Chairman of the Events Industry Forum. And for my sins, I, uh, I walked into my first festival in 1966, which kind of gives away something about my pension. Um, but um, I've been kind of lucky enough to be in the events and festival industry all of my working life. I've never done anything else. And one day I'm going to get a proper job. And uh, it, it, it was in the middle of the 1980s, my, my now good friend Joe Blick walked onto one of my festival sites and said, me and my friends are going to separate your cans, bottles, plastic bits and pieces and cardboard into different skips. And I thought, well, do that if you want. Uh, what's, what's the point of that? And she went on to explain what that was all about. That was in the 1980s. We've come a long way, and, uh, and I hope you'll agree. And today, I think it's been remarkable that the Vision 2025 team have just been this, made this day so fantastically amazing and uplifting. And I, I think, well, I'm going to thank them anyway. <laughs> Just brilliant. It makes us all feel great. So with one of my hats on, chairing the uh, Events Industry Forum, we published the Purple Guide. And I guess most of you are familiar with what that is. Um, it is what it says on the tin. It's the guidance of all kinds of different areas of the outdoor events industry. Uh, it's now 37 chapters. And I'm absolutely delighted that we have now finally got a major chapter on sustainability. And uh, it was no problem at all deciding who we wanted to write it. It was Chris Johnson and the team at Vision 2025 were going to pull together a great team to write this most valuable chapter. Absolutely delighted. It'll be up on the Purple Guide website in about a week to ten days' time but Chris is going to tell you what's actually in it, and I'd like to thank him for having chaired the writing group. Thanks, Chris. Cheers. Great. Well, I share the excitement. Um, as Steve mentioned, we've all been familiar with the Purple Guide uh, and why it exists. It was brought into being to provide some consistency and some advice uh, across the industry, for all stakeholders, for events, for suppliers, for local authorities particularly, just to create that kind of level playing field. And those of you who were around in the event industry in the 80s will remember that health and safety was, uh, well, an emerging thing. Uh, it was, it, it was I, I, <laughs> I won't tell you some of the stories of the things I've seen on festival sites. I'm sure many of you have seen crazy things. But there was a real need to create... Uh, safer events um, and the collaboration between the government and the industry took the form of the purple guide which the events industry forum has chaired all those 37 chapters are created by a working group it's all voluntary uh, which covers everything from uh, medical practice to security to stewarding to energy etc etc most of you know it so fantastic that we finally got there and we've got an environmental sustainability chapter so thanks for the eif for making this happen, for commissioning it. Uh, thanks to the working group that have worked over the last six to eight months to make it happen. That's Julie's Bicycle Hope Solutions, the local authority event organizers group, LAOG, uh, and Live Nation. And thanks to everyone that took part in the industry survey. Uh, we put a draft out to consultation several months ago. Lots of people gave valuable feedback. Um, it's been sort of rewritten twice. It's been a real challenge, actually, getting that sweet spot between meaningful, comprehensive advice and something which is accessible. Uh, and something which I spoke briefly about earlier was that uh, quite often the work of Vision 2025 and quite often where most of the people in this room find themselves is probably in that 5-10% of people that have been doing this for some time. But, you know, uh, it's the pioneers group. Uh, and there's been a dawning realization uh, in our work as Vision 2025 that we really need to speak to the 90% to make this happen. Yeah, no one needs to hear again that we're running out of time. 2030 is approaching, urgent actions required. How do we actually do this as an industry? Well, it's fantastic 
the work that's been done by the Pioneer Group, but we really need to speak to that 90%, and that's what this chapter's about. So there's a few reasons um, why we've done the chapter. It's establishing best practice, obviously. Um, now, there's all sorts of guidance out there, but the risk of stating the obvious, by writing a Purple Guide chapter, we place environmental sustainability at the heart of existing and authoritative guidance that local authorities to refer to can already refer to. Uh, so in a way, it's half the job is already done. We've now got some advice, some best practice, which is sitting in a place uh, where people already uh, naturally refer to. And I guess we all know that the, the journey from where we are now to where we perhaps need to be uh, takes us all. It takes the supply chain, it takes local authorities, it takes event organizers. Um, and so the Purple Guide uh, is the place where everyone engages. Also, creating a common language. Um, the perennial question, of course, is what does good look like? So we hope that this chapter will, is that first step to just kind of, uh, it's minimum best practice, really. Uh, it's designed to be accessible, but it hope that we create that common language around what good looks like in a way that everyone can access it. What actually is it? Uh, no surprises, the chapter includes strategy, it looks at emissions, net zero, it looks at the regular impact areas, energy, resources and waste, food and beverage, etc. And it also covers communications, partnerships and sponsors. So as Steve said, it will be live on the Purple Guide website in uh, a week or two. Um, I want to make the point that this is a first edition. Um, and it is work in progress. Like I referenced a moment ago, it's really been a challenge. The feedback from industry, which has been really valuable, has been, oh, we're not saying enough about that. It's not detailed. And other people have said, hey, you know, I'm a community event organizer. I don't even know what that word means. Um, so uh, thanks to Hope Solutions, because they've offered us uh, a comprehensive glossary of sustainability terms, which is referenced, uh, which will sit on the Vision 2025 website. And I just want to make the point that that's a wiki resource. Uh, and by that, I mean, we really welcome feedback. Um, uh, if there's a term missing, if a term isn't explained right, let's use that as a sort of collective resource to help people who are perhaps earlier on their journey to start to understand at least the terminology around sustainability. So it's, it, it, it's a first stab at it. Uh, please engage with it. Tell everyone about it. Tell your councils and suppliers about it. Tell friends in the events industry. Uh, email the event industry forum directly with feedback. We'll be revisiting it. Uh, it's online rather than in print, so we can make updates as we go. I think that's it. Yeah, please use it. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Chris. D just to round off, um, I'm, I'm depending on you. I've, I've got children and grandchildren working in the festival and events industry, running festivals right now, and I'm rather depending on you to save this planet for them to carry on their work. So thank you for the great work you do, and uh, please do more, as much as you can. Thank you. Thank you.